Hi, it's Matt here. So in this video, we're going to look at this car, our Hyundai Ioniq Electric, and look at the true running cost of running this car. Well, just the energy costs, the charging costs. And uh, we're now in September 2022, so we're going to look at our what we pay for uh, electricity at home, because we do all our charging at home. Uh, I'm not going to look at the Tesla today because a lot of people get upset when I talk about the running costs and charging costs of the Tesla. That's actually considerably cheaper, but we're just going to concentrate on the real mileage we do in this and what it actually costs us to charge. Right, so let's just start this up. So this is a 2017 car. It's... Um, about five and a half years old now but it is actually done 98,761 miles. These Ionics, particularly these um, earlier smaller battery ones, this has got a 28 kilowatt hour pack, these are incredibly efficient. So even though they do have a small battery the range is more than enough for the average person oh and i would just say mel does a 50 mile a day commute on weekdays which is 45 minutes each way 25 miles each way so that is probably average or, or slightly higher than average and even so she's only using what 40 percent of the pack a day if that so every night at home we do a top up um, on cheap rate energy during the night. But these are very efficient EVs, so um, it's been a long time since I've looked at this. So let's go to eco driving and go to history. And um, yeah, yesterday getting 5.5 on average, 5.3, 5.5, 5.4, 5.5, 5 5.2. To be honest, Mel doesn't drive this particularly efficiently because obviously he doesn't need to, range isn't an issue. But you can see these sort of daily miles, 70 miles, 25 miles. This is obviously work and back, 4.6 one way, 5.2 another. You know, probably driving with the heating on and driving rushing in the morning, coming home, driving a bit more gently, 5.2. Um, when I was driving this, I was sort of getting five and a half minimum. Uh, I can drive this more efficiently than Mel does, but it's probably because he's not trying. Um, I actually did get 8.4 out of this, and this wasn't a quick drive just going down a hill. That was, on average, on a longer drive, driving very economically, of course. So 5.5 um, is, uh, on average, is um, quite normal for these cars. They are very good at just sipping those electrons. Anyway, uh, as I said, we do all our charging on Octopus Go at night time. So if you don't understand what the Octopus Go tariff is, um, you get a, a four hour window at night time where your electricity is cheaper. And if you've got an electric car and you can charge from home, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? So we schedule on the car, we schedule all of our charging between 12.30 at night at 4.30 in the morning. And that is more than enough for the uh, daily top up to bring the battery up to 100%. So therefore, in this car, 100% of its driving is done on that cheap rate energy. So fortunately, we've still got the 5p a kilowatt hour rate at night time with Octopus Go, and that's fixed until June 2023. And at that rate, charging this car uh, on a daily daily drive of 50 miles a day which as I said is probably uh, slightly higher than the average we we have a running cost of this car of only 45 pence a day to do that uh, 50 miles per day on average so incredibly low running costs so if you were to switch to Octopus Go or you were out of contract and you renewed your Octopus Go tariff, you're not going to get that 5p per kilowatt hour. Now, the rate, or the current rate, as I record this in September 2022, is 7.5p at night. And it looks like that's going to stay for some time yet. Even with the new capped energy prices, it looks like it's going to remain at 7.5p a kilowatt hour. So we're not going to be paying that until end of June next year. But based on uh, that 7.5p a kilowatt hour, the running cost of this car is going to increase from 45p a day to 68p a day. 
So still incredibly affordable and a very, very cheap motoring. So as I said, Mel's 50 miles a day uh, is probably quite typical. And in this car, that's using about 10 kilowatt hours of energy a day. So very low motoring cost, and we don't have any other cost for charging. In fact, it's actually going to be a little bit cheaper because today we went to uh, went to the shops. We went into Oxford, parked in the Westgate shopping centre where there are 50 chargers in the car park. So while we were there today, we charged the car up and we didn't charge the car last night. So again, saved a bit of money. We got uh, about an 80, we went from about 15% uh, to 80% in the time we were shopping. And that came with no cost. Uh, often you will find in shopping centres, retail parks, that sort of thing. If there's slow AC charging, that's free because obviously you're spending money in the shopping centre while you're charging. Uh, so we had to pay for parking like everyone but we didn't pay for the uh, electricity so when you factor in the occasional times this gets charged uh, when we're shopping and when we can take advantage of charging at retail parks and that sort of thing the actual running cost is lower than the 45p a day anyway and we don't do any other public charging on this car um, so obviously if you're going to do a longer trip more than the range of the vehicle then yes it would come at a cost of charging it but uh, we very rarely do that in this vehicle um, once a year if that majority of times we're using the other car and we do the long distance journeys now so this is the local runaround car the 50 miles a day for Mel's commuting um, the most in reality she does is sort of 100 110 miles if she's doing more driving um, and to be honest that's uh, probably more than the average i think the uk average is about 25 26 miles a day so a lot of people when they're looking at evs they focus on that once a year when they drive hundreds of miles on maybe a holiday or something but for most of us for 95 percent of the time or more we're just driving to work every day and on a weekend you're doing your social stuff and shopping and things like that and you look at your typical daily use most people it is you know it's 25 miles or so a day um, so yes if we have a longer trip then obviously it's going to cost us more if we were to public dc rapid charge but uh, that's incredibly rare in this car um, we haven't publicly charged this for probably over a year now to be honest so that's it um, i just wanted to explain what the real costs are for running an ev that is if you can charge from home it's a different story if you can't and you have to rely solely on public charging but obviously a lot of electric car owners can charge from home and um, obviously that is if you can charge on a cheap rate nighttime tariff so you do need a smart meter for that but why wouldn't you get one it's just um, the advantage of doing that cheap rate nighttime tariff is it's obviously a lot cheaper for you. The energy is also often greener at night, obviously depends on the weather, but it also helps the grid out. That's why they give you the electricity cheaper because it's also in their benefit as well to help balance the grid, to shift all the electric car charging to the night time when we're all asleep and all the businesses, well a lot of businesses are shut and it just helps balance the grid. So I know a lot of people will probably say, well, that's not realistic, but of course it is. If you've got an electric car and you can charge from home, why wouldn't you take advantage of cheaper nighttime electricity? So that's it for this one. If you found this video useful, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube. That really does help and allows other people to find the channel. Do subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I guess in the next few weeks, I'll do a video on the true cost of running this car, because as I hinted, it is significantly cheaper running that than this one. But anyway, I'll see you on the next video.